Welcome to Nursing School Explained and this video on urinary tract infections, specifically pyelonephritis or kidney infections. When we look at the urinary tract, we have to distinguish between the upper and the lower urinary tract. The upper urinary tract contains the kidneys and the ureters, where the lower urinary tract contains the bladder and the urethra. So typically what happens for any kind of urinary tract infections, bacteria enter from the urethra and travel up into the bladder. Now if this is untreated or if the patient is at high risk, the bacteria can travel further into the kidneys causing an infection there. And upper urinary tract infections are always more complicated or more dangerous than lower urinary tract which urinary tract infections, which is why we should always teach our patients if they have signs and symptoms and if they're high risk to get checked right away to make sure to prevent the kidney infection from happening. So um, for generally urinary tract infections, females are at a higher risk than male patients and specifically young ones between the age of 18 and 30 years old. And that is because the length of the urethra in females is shorter. So the bacteria has less of a travel distance and young women are more likely to be sexually active, which also causes the urinary tract infections. Other risk factors include diabetes, poor hygiene, estrogen deficiency because estrogen usually is protective from bacteria entering the urinary tract. In male patients, prostate enlargement, but also kidney stones can get infected. Now signs and symptoms of urinary tract infections in general usually include dysuria, painful urination, as well as urgency and frequency, and then suprapubic pain, usually if it's contained to the bladder. There can be some incomplete emptying because of that irritation that that bacteria causes in the urinary tract. There can be hematuria, blood in the urine, whether that's visible with the naked eye, meaning bright red blood in the urine, that's also called gross hematuria or just microscopic being seen on the urinalysis. And then pyuria, meaning that there's pus seen in the urine that it is actually kind of cloudy, um, cloudy looking. Now for pyelonephritis, in addition, the patient will usually have nausea and vomiting. They might have a fever and or flank pain. So flank pain meaning at the bottom end of the rib cage in their back. And so then what we want to do for diagnostic tests is check a urinalysis, which is usually positive for white blood cells, nitrates, bacteria, and red blood cells. It also may contain some protein if there has been some involvement with the kidney, if that kidney um, filtration membrane has been damaged by the urinary tract infection by the bacteria. So we want to make sure to keep a close eye on that. Of course, we want to send that urine sample for culture to check exactly what bacteria is causing that. And then we also want to check a CBC for to check the patient's white count and uh, also a CMP to check their electrolytes, specifically potassium. We always have to be careful when we think about the kidneys with potassium, but also of course the CMP is going to show us the patient's kidney function with BUN and creatinine. Now the treatment for urinary tract infection is antibiotics and usually that's a long course. It can be seven or 10 days. If it's a complicated UTI, which usually kidney infections are considered complicated. If the patient is pregnant or if they're diabetic or have some under, other underlying renal condition or if they're a male patient, meaning that this could be a prostatitis, the course might even be longer, meaning like 14 or 21 days, depending on how the patient's symptoms progress. Now the other treatment would be antiemetics and antipyretics to treat the fever, nausea and vomiting. Analgesics for the bladder is really nice is pyridium. That's a analgesic that really helps to soothe the symptoms of dysuria, urgency and frequency. And then fluids are going to be very, very important. First of all, which helps to flush out any bacteria from the urinary tract and it helps 
for patients who have nausea and vomiting, so think about IV fluids and or to treat the fever that they might be experiencing. And patients with palonephritis might be able to be treated at home, but sometimes they require hospitalization depending on their circumstances, pregnancy, diabetes, male patients, and how, um, how their kidney involvement is. So if there's an elevation in renal function, then they probably will have to stay at the hospital to keep a close eye on them. So complications, it can cause an renal abscess, meaning the bacteria now gets lodged in the kidney, causing an, an abscess formation. It can lead to urosepsis, and it can lead to renal damage and or renal scarring, especially if there's repeated episodes of palinonephritis. As for nursing care, we wanna always assess the urinalysis and the urine culture, and always check the result of that urine culture when it comes back after about 48 hours, because whatever empiric antibiotic the patient might have been started on might not be sensitive to whatever bacteria is causing it. So we wanna make sure that we are not um, having any, any antibiotic resistance on that urine culture. We also wanna check their labs, their renal function and their white count and see and trend those. And then always check their vital signs because we know that they're nauseous and vomiting, so they might not get enough fluid. They're at high risk for dehydration. They have a fever and the pyelonephritis can lead to urosepsis. So we really need to stay on top of the patient's vital signs to make sure that they're not going septic on us. And in addition, we want to check their eyes and nose to see how much fluid are they taking in how much fluid are they actually vomiting if that's the case and how much is the kidney filtering and what is the color of that urine. If it initially has some gross hematuria, is it eventually lighting up or is it bright red? What is the progression of that as the, the fluids are being processed through the kidneys? And then of course we wanna administer the antibiotics, analgesics and antiemetics. If the patient is admitted, certainly there will be IV medications. We want to encourage PO fluids as tolerated and certainly they'll need some IV fluids if they're admitted. We want to teach the patient about prevention and that mostly pertains to our patients, the, the, the young females and the high risk patients. And then we always want to encourage the patient to complete the full course of the antibiotic because otherwise we might contribute to antibiotic resistance and only partially treat their infection and then if the bacteria is not completely gone out of the urinary tract it can further lead to these complications and now we have resistant bacteria to deal with so very very important so please also check out the other video that i have about urinary tract infections that affect the lower urinary tract which are usually more uncomplicated utis and also check out the other videos about the complications specifically about sepsis Thanks so much for watching and see you soon.